All right, YouTube, it is Mr. Mean here coming at you this fine Sunday morning. Uh, gonna do a little prep work for my Fallout game tonight, but I wanted, I wanted to uh, do another test video uh, for uh, my painting channel, uh, The Art is the Many. Um, it's, I had double uh, echo audio coming through and uh, I just want to see if I've got it resolved. I think I do, so you guys let me know down in the comments. Uh, but uh, while I make this video and I get some testing done, so to speak, I wanted to play around with uh, some stuff here. It looks like the lighting is okay. Let's see, yeah, we can see okay. I need another light on top of the camera shining down right here above me. I'm gonna have to work on that. Um, but today's video du jour, as always, is I wanted to talk about Warlord. If you don't know what this, if you're a miniature gamer, and everybody knows Warhammer and 40K and Age of Sigmar, and of course the new, the old world, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of other good miniature games out there. And um, I think uh, they get overlooked. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a focus video on my channel uh, for these games. I'm going to turn my down a little bit because I'm peeking really hard here. I don't want to blow your speakers out. There we go. That's a little better. I uh, Maybe a little more. Boop. There we go. Um, there's a lot of good miniatures games out there. Oop, I'm still peeking pretty hard. I have one of those voices. Okay, there we go. All right, so hopefully this is a little better. We're going to actually come down a little bit more. There we go. All righty. So there's a lot of good miniature games out there. Um, and I think I'm going to do a separate video in this format, what you're seeing here. Um, and we're going to talk about, but today I want to talk a little bit about Warlord second edition. There is a second book. I don't remember what it's called. I do not have it. I need to go on Reaper's, um, uh, <laughs> find Rift's books. There's a note to myself, um, to, uh, get that second book. Cause I don't have it. I don't even know if it's available. Um, this game was super easy and, you know, one of the cool things about it is you had, move my glue here out of the way so you had a data card get that in the screen there you had a data card so this is a data card now for a while they were selling their um, warlord uh, dark haven miniatures with a data card i don't think they're doing that anymore unless you find some old miniatures like at your local game store you might see this data card in there and it was pretty useful what was neat about this is you know you had all your basic information here but you had multiple lines right so you see all the lines here um and uh it gave you all your special bills your your melee attack va va value your uh, number of melee attacks uh range attack value number of ranged attacks uh command points if i remember correctly it's it's been a long time and i don't have my reading glasses on i think i left them upstairs let's see i might be able to cheat and use these yeah there we go. I can. That's the joy of you guys not being able to see me. Uh, CP stands for casting power. So yeah, if they had magical ability, the game is based on D10s. And so what would happen is as a unit gets wounded with no wounds, it goes on this first track here for your, your uh, DT, uh, which was uh, damage track. M MOV was movement. Discipline, that was like your willpower almost. Uh, DV is defensive value, and an MD is magic defense. Uh, <clears throat> SA was special abilities, and only certain troops had SA special abilities. Not all. This guy here, example, is a crusader. He's good alignment. He cost 120 points. He gets on a standard size base, which at this time was 25 millimeter, but you could scale these up to, you know, 32 millimeter or 30 millimeter, whatever you wanted. His uh, rank was he was a unique a uh, unique captain which means in every four to ten squad you could have one so a minimum squad size is four maximum squad size is ten and you could have one um and he was human um i don't know what that stands for eight number eight skew oh okay so if you wanted to go on reaper's website and put that skew number in you could find this model which is kind of cool i don't know if they have a picture of them they don't ah that's um 
But what was cool is as your model took wounds, right, you would go down these. So if you took one wound, you would go to this track. So, and then, every, you know, you move six inches, your, your discipline was eight, your uh, defensive value was eight, and your magic defense was 12. And then your second wound, it would obviously go down a little bit. Um, uh, special abilities, he was a war caster, uh, 14 special abilities. Um, that's a little further down the page right here. So you can see uh, melee attack value, uh, melee value. And so it was a really cool game. Uh, ma not mass warfare, but um, uh, skirmish level combat. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, and so what I thought I wanted to show today while I'm just testing this video, is I'm going to move this over here, get it out of the way. And then what we're going to do is... This is Perdomo, Lot 23. Uh, this is an old wooden box. This is a cigar box. Um, I'm a cigar aficionado. I don't like to smoke, but I do love the smell of cigars. And every once in a while, I will smoke a cigar, especially with my buddy uh, Mike uh, Wilster. Uh, but unfortunately, he lives in Arizona now, and I live in Minnesota. So, But we do have a really good cigar, cigar shop here. And one of the neat things... Um, about this hobby is the innovation to use different things and recycle. We have such a great opportunity in this hobby to recycle material from everyday, you, you know, utensils, pill bottles, you know, instead of throwing it in a plastic heap, keep a couple of them, use them to paint, make penetrant, uh, painting handles. They work great for that. Um, styrofoam or, or foam, you know, this is just my foam. This is a, um, scalpel so it's very very sharp it's even a little sharper than your average uh exacto knife i feel uh you know so just reusing stuff like that plastic bins and things like that um i find reuse form but what was neat is i got into warlord pretty hard um <clears throat> i ran several demos while i lived in uh, arizona at the local game store and i um one of the things that was really neat is at the time, Reaper sent me a ton of lead. Um, and unfortunately, I never got to I don't even know what happened to all that lead. I might have gave it to Mikey. I'm not sure. I don't know whatever happened to it. Um, I think it might have got thrown in the bin, which I'm really bummed about. But at the time, I was going through a horrible divorce. And, well, things happen. And, you know, it is what it is. Um, but on to the point of recycling. Uh, this is a cigar box. It's nothing fancy. It's, it's a, a very nice... As you can see here, it's a very nice cigar box, you know. And uh, what's nice is you open it up and you've got all your miniatures. Now, I put a piece of tin down in it and then I did little magnets, as you can see right there, the little magnet. And it sticks to them. It's a D10 game. We use D6s for wound counters and stuff like that. I got some extra magnets here I need to glue on. I think one of these guys is, somebody's missing a magnet here. Who's, who's missing their magnet? We'll figure it out. Ah, there he is. So as you can see, his magnet fell off. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the magnet and we're going to re-glue it. Because one of the nice things is um, this is... Um, Super glue, a uh, brush and nozzle. This stuff is amazing. Um, it has a brush on it. So if you screw down the bottom, you get the brush applicator. There you go. And it's made of some sort of synthetic fiber so that the super glue doesn't F it all up. Because if you get super glue on one of your good paint brushes, you will soon see that it is a world of hurt. Um, or we can take this off from this part and it's just a nozzle. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put, I'm going to put my cheaters on here because like I said, my glasses, my contacts don't let me see up close. Um, so you can see there's some glue there and we're just going to get a little dollop of super glue. There we go. That's all we need. Always put your lid back on your super glue when you're not using it because this stuff will dry out. And this stuff is not necessarily cheap. Although I buy mine at the local hardware store, I don't go and buy the super expensive, you know, Citadel or whatever stuff. I just buy the cheapest I can find. So there we go. We got our magnet back on there and pretty much back in the same spot it was in. I'm going to let that sit. One of the cool things you can get is um, 
this stuff right here. Um, this is a uh, zip kicker accelerator for super glue, but here's the neat thing. Moisture um, accelerates it as well. So this stuff is kind of, it, 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 I mean, it's good and it's bad. It's messy. It smells funny. Um, it does. I've got quite a bit left in there, but if you just exhale on these, if you're not in a hurry, super hurry, you can just exhale on it and you can do a pretty good job of getting that, that magnet to stick pretty solid. So, cause the moisture in your breath is what seals it, uh, which reactivates it. So hopefully that's on there pretty good. We're going to let it sit for a minute, but what I wanted to go over real quick is these are some pretty solid dwarfs. These are all Reaper. Uh, this one's, um, I white based it and you can see, um, I've got my, my hero. Uh, this is like the Thane or whatever you want to call him. I think his wings, no, they're not bent. Um, you can see he's got this lustrous cape on. Look at that. That cape is amazing. Um, and of course he's got a little, some sort of eagle or something and then this huge ax. Um, this is going to be a joy to paint. So what I think I want to do is I want to start painting these up. Um, don't think I'm going to play the old world, but just in case I get the chance to or whatever or somebody wants to play, I'll, I'll have a little dwarf faction. I can do a small skirmish. Um, but these are my dwarves. Um, I think they look fantastic. Um, here's a dwarf crossbowman with his nice helm on, lots of chain mail. The detail, now these models are 20 years old, um, and look how well they're done. This is the joy of, uh, you know, pewter or lead. Some of these aren't primed yet, like this one's bare. Um, I haven't even put his weapons or anything on him. Uh, and then some got a black prime. Uh, not sure what I was doing here, um, but yeah, he's all set. You can see these are slotta bases. Um, which is the old, that's the way miniatures were fixed back then. Um, let's see. Oh, here's the, here's your tome for your, your, my cleric or my magic user. Um, I just got to paint that up, but it, I thought it looks pretty cool. It's like a little, a little rock golem carrying, uh, he's got a pouch on him and he's, he's carrying the book. Got a bunch of extra weapons and everything here that you can see. Uh, shields and stuff. This is the headdress. I'm pretty sure I'm going to let that set for just a minute. Um, here's one of the, the heroes. Snorri, I think his name was. Um, but look at that shield. I mean, that's not going to be too terribly hard to paint. There's great detail. You can see I went a little crazy with the super glue to get that wrist on there. But these were metal monitors, metal miniatures. And back in the day, they were a pain in the ass to put together. But this is... Uh, this is the like high priest and this is his little backpack. So it'll go on there and sit on there like that. Um, I'm thinking what I might do though, is I might leave this off. I don't really like the look of it and I think it goes on him. I'm pretty sure it goes on him. Yeah. Cause the Thane doesn't have, yeah, he doesn't have a nub on his back. So I'm pretty sure this goes this, but you can see some of these still need to be put together. I got them primed. I scraped off the nub where his uh, his weapon goes, and then you would just put this axe hand on there, you know, like so. A little dollop of uh, super glue or whatever, and that would do that. I got some of them put together. Uh, here's one. I think I had to put his... Nope, he's a solid piece. So, really uh, nice. Uh, this guy's a bowman. So there should be an extra bow in here somewhere. Oh, no, he's got his bow on. Um, here's some of the hand axes. So lots of cool stuff here. Got to put some shields on. I got a bunch of various different shields. Um, but this little book, this little book goes with him. Um, but look at the detail on there. That's such a nice miniature. And I believe he's, there's a two-handed weapon in here that goes for him. I hope I didn't lose it. It should be in here somewhere. Uh, and it looks like maybe I did lose. I may have to reorder this miniature because I don't. Oh, nope. There it is. There's his hammer. So he, he goes like that. And I'll have to fiddle with it to get it to, to sit just right. But as you can see, and then he has this big two-handed hammer. So I think it looks awesome. So these are my dwarves. I'm going to put these guys together, get them primed. Uh, my next setup is to 
The weather's a little too cold to airbrush outside, but I can airbrush in here. And so the plan is to clear this space off and then um, airbrush in here. Um, I can set my airbrush. I have a little thing with a filter and everything on it, and I can set it right here, and I can airbrush, put my compressor underneath my desk. And the nice part is this is my house. I'm in my basement, um, and I can airbrush, and it shouldn't really bother anybody. The vibration won't go through the floor and bother the downstairs neighbor because there is no downstairs neighbor. And it's funny because these are, uh, these are my original D10s from way back in the day. Uh, this one was white, and it's just turned kind of yellow. I mean, they've been in here forever. Um, but, yeah, just recycling. You know, it's got a nice little perdomo um, on there. But just a nice little case for miniatures, you know. Um, they're all, like I said, magnetized. So I can just close this up, take it with me when I'm ready to go play a game. I can even put one of those little straps or a big rubber band around it to keep it from falling apart. But... I've got it and it's ready to go and I can take this. I could even go crazy if I wanted to sand this down. I did think about this and find a nice image. Um, this isn't too deep into the wood, so it would sand down. Uh, yeah, that wood's a quarter inch thick. So I could sand this down and then maybe just use some Mod Podge and put a nice dwarf logo. All of the, uh, all of the clans, let's see if we can find them in here. All of the clans have a, a, have a symbol. I believe the dwarves is a uh, helmet. So let me see. Let me put these cheaters back on. Uh, dwarves, there we go. Page 72. Let's go to page 72. Like I said, I was a big fan of the dwarves. I still am. I, whenever I play a role-playing game, when I actually play, I play a dwarf. Yeah, there's the dwarven logo right there. So it's, it's basically uh, the, the face, face helm. Um, but yeah, here's your dwarf. Here's your army list. These are all the miniatures. And again, it gives you the um, SKU number if you want to go on the Reaper's website and order these miniatures. You can, um, and that's pretty cool. And we got what one, two, three, four pages, and then it tells you all of their special abilities uh, that dwarves get, uh, dwarven spells, and then it goes into elves. So yeah, I could maybe. I could actually scan this in, cut it out, print it a little bit larger, and then put that, sand this down and put that right here and then Mod Podge it and have it on there. That would be pretty dope, I think. That'd be pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, just, this is a tester video. Like I said, I wanted to test out and make sure I got my audio dialed in properly. Uh, hopefully I did. Let me know what the sound quality is like. Uh, I've got a couple of different miniatures uh, that I need to get painted. I have a whole bunch of these Wrath of Kings miniatures that I really need to get some paint on because they're nice kind of resin. I don't know what these are made out of. They're kind of a soft plastic. Um, and this, I bought these years ago when the game came out and I didn't know enough. And I used rubber or rubber cement. <laughs> I used plastic cement to glue these on and they just would not stick. And I think I realized my error afterwards. And I went back and put super glue because you can see it's discolored, which is that's typical of super glue. So, yeah, these must be some sort of resin because plastic cement uh, doesn't work on uh, resin, uh, even though it is a type of plastic. Now, these. Um, these miniatures all have these like spikes coming out. They wear a mask uh, in this game. The, um, I forgot what they're called now. The Not Nephilim. Nazim. Something like that. I can't remember. Um, but they all wear a mask. And all these masks have horns. So I have all these little fiddly miniatures that have separate horns or back spikes that come out and stick up like an L almost and go on to their back. I'm not putting those on. It's just too fiddly. So if push comes to shove, I'll use a little piece of putty and cover that up and sand it down. But uh, these are pretty cool. I don't remember the lore. I do have the rule book for this game. It was a really cool game, um, and I really got into it, and I bought a bunch of the miniatures. Uh, I have a basically a full army. Um, I have the box set over there, too. So, yeah, really cool. I want to get some paint on these just to practice painting. I want to use an airbrush on these. And, you know, I'm going to prime them white and then, or prime them black and then do a white and then dry brush them gray. Uh, and then there's a lot of flesh tone on this. So these are going to be good for practicing uh, flesh color. Uh, so I got a bunch of these uh, models. 
um, in different types. Uh, these are like the warrior women. I love the shields, and that's their that's their symbol. So yeah, these are really cool. They have tape over their nipples, uh, and they're basically the demon mask with the shield makes them pretty tough. But you can see they're not wearing a lot of armor, and they are some chunky girls, uh, and they kick ass in combat. So. Um, I really like the models. Uh, I've got some bigger models that are going to paint up really nice. So probably start painting those on the channel as well. Uh, so I want to look forward to that. I have a whole bunch of the core space stuff I want to paint up. Um, this series came out a little dark. I don't think I dry brushed it bright enough. Uh, so, but it, I mean, it's tabletop ready. It's good enough. I mean, it looks really dark here because I don't have enough light. I need to get some better light under here. Yeah, if I, I can't get that light close enough. I have an external battery pack that I can put this little light on for right now. But this guy came out pretty good. I, I need to do some touch-up on his weapon. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with these. Uh, I think this guy came out really well. Um, I don't know how well you can see him. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he came out pretty good. Um, I tried to keep the theme going of blue for everybody. Um, this is my dwarf that was for a role-playing campaign that I was playing in and then I dropped out of because uh, I just didn't have time. Um, but yeah, I got to finish him up. He's got some, some weapons and stuff that need to go on. Uh, but I really like the model, so I want to finish him as well. So there you go, guys. Just a quick uh, what's going on on the channel. I've got some Infinity stuff to paint. Um, I got my, my bodyguard here I want to get painted up because I think he's pretty badass. I got his backpack. Got them all glued together. Got him dry brushed. I think I need to do a lighter, a bright white on him uh, to dry brush him. And then I think he'll be ready to start painting because he came out really nice. So... I'm babbling now. I just want to do a quick video. Um, more painting videos coming soon. Um, and we'll get everything going here. Just trying to get this all dialed in. Let me know what you think about the audio quality. quality. And then, as always, peace, love, hair grease. Remember, be nice and uh, happy weekend. I'll talk to you guys soon.